Hello, my name is Holly Lane, and I'm the director of the University of Florida Literacy Institute. And the purpose of this presentation is to answer the question, what is the science of reading? One way that we can conceptualize reading is using the simple view of reading. This was first proposed by Goffin Tunmer in the 80s. And the idea here is that reading comprehension is the product of decoding and linguistic comprehension. What that means is it can be depicted as a mathematical formula where D times LC equals RC. D being decoding, LC being linguistic comprehension, and RC being reading comprehension. The reason it's depicted as a mathematical formula is that if either decoding or linguistic comprehension is weak, the effect is multiplied. That is, you can never have better reading comprehension than the level of development of your decoding or linguistic comprehension. Another way to illustrate the same basic idea is what Hollis Scarborough did. She created a metaphor where the various components within language comprehension and word recognition are thought of as strands that we are woven together to create a rope, the rope being skilled reading. So as the language comprehension strands become more tightly woven, all of that becomes increasingly strategic. Similarly, when the word recognition strands become more tightly wo woven together or more, more fully developed, that means those skills are becoming increasingly automatic. When all of these skills are fully developed, then that's when skilled reading or fluent execution and coordination of the various strands occurs. So when we're considering the question, what is the science of reading? We're thinking of how we know what we know about what goes into high quality reading instruction. Unfortunately, in our preparation as teachers, most, if not all of our knowledge, probably came from education research. Education research focuses on pedagogy, including instructional methods and materials. We also, in education, study things like what do teachers need to know and what student outcomes can we expect. So this includes things like the National Reading Panel report that summarized for us the research in five key areas of reading. It includes things like multi-tiered systems of support, intervention methods, ways that we can monitor student progress, and then some of the important um, summaries of research like the IES practice guides. However, education research is only one piece of the puzzle. To get a more complete picture, we have to also look to other fields. Research in psychology should also inform our reading instruction. This psychology can include developmental psychology and cognitive psychology. This refers to the study of thinking and learning. This includes the study of mental processes such as memory, attention, perception, and problem solving. So this is where we get information about things like the development of knowledge networks, um, how things are stored in memory, the kinds of practice that promote learning, such as blocked practice versus interleaved practice, and also how we organize and retrieve information. All of this helps us understand how people learn. Understanding how people learn helps us understand more about how to teach. But again, there's more. Linguistics is the study of language and its structure. This includes the study of various language structures, including semantics, syntax, morphology, phonology, phonetics, and so on. All of these are important in reading and having an understanding of the findings from linguistics research helps us understand what we need to teach and how we need to sequence that instruction. In other words, what prerequisite knowledge and skills are necessary for new knowledge and skills to build on. 
This can include things like how articulatory gestures can promote phonemic awareness, how instruction and syntax can contribute to reading comprehension, how about oral language development or decoding or morphology development? How do those things contribute to reading development? The last piece of this science of reading puzzle is neuroscience. Neuroscience is the study of the structure and function of the human brain. This is a field that has really exploded over the last couple of decades. And in relation to reading, we understand much more about how the brain works which areas are activated and skilled and unskilled readers, and how reading instruction can change neural activation patterns and even brain structure. Neuroscience helps us understand what parts of the brain are involved in different reading activities, how the brains of normal readers look different from the brains of struggling readers or students with dyslexia, and how things change as students get the proper intervention. The impact of neuroscience on our reading instruction is a pretty distant connection, but it does help us understand a little bit more about what's going on, and it should contribute to our understanding of why we are doing things in reading. Understanding how students learn, what they need to learn, and what happens when we teach them in different ways is really necessary if we want to give kids the best possible opportunity to become proficient readers. The findings from all of these fields helps us understand what we should be teaching, when we should be teaching it, and how it should be taught.